So we have created visual course pages, which are like custom user interfaces, custom UI that we have been creating, right? And for doing that, uh, we so far we are just dealing with the standard controller. All right. I'll talk about other type of controller also, but uh, that's something which we will talk a little later. You know, then talk, get into with the custom controller right now. Uh, okay. So primarily, so far the user interfaces that we are creating are for displaying the data. So you know, if I go back to the examples that we did yesterday, we would see that most of them, or in fact, all of them, are for displaying the data. If I go into this example, uh, V4. So this is more or less displaying the data, right? First name, last name, does that? If I go to the other page. This page is also for displaying the data. If I go to the seven, we created this page also for displaying the data, right? So we are not interacting with the page. It's like, you know, just the page displays the data. So far, we have just learned how to create pages where you can display the data to the end user. What if I want to uh, allow the end user to make some changes in that data or maybe enter the data into the database? Right. So far, it's just a one way communication the data from the database. The data is being displayed on the page and the end user can view it. Now I want to create pages which allow me to enter the data myself or edit the data. Right. So for doing that, uh, we will use uh, one more component, which is called an apex form component. Right. So we'll uh, learn about apex form component and how we can use it and what sort of other components we can use with it. Right, that's what we are going to do today. So first of all, let's start with a very basic kind of an example. Where I just, you know, display data from a few fields and I make them editable. Okay. So start with a page. Um, use the standard controller account as we did earlier. Page block put a title to it mm. display data and I'll display a few fields of data here. Let's say that name. Right. So just created a simple page which will display these five fields from an account. Let me fetch the ID of the account. Taken this ID. The question mark ID equals. Okay. Right. So, as I told you, you know, uh, this page is only allowing me to display the data. All right. On the page, I am not able to edit it. I am not able to do anything. Right. Now, how do I edit this? So, let me create one more page block here, just below this, which allows me to edit the data from my side. So in that case, you'll use one more component. First of all, let's create a page block and then we'll see. Um, edit data. 
call it whatever you want and there's a component called input field component this input field component basically allows you to uh, be able to edit the data got it so it has an attribute which is called value and value can be a field name so you can reference to a field in the value like account dot name so instead of using that formula directly which ends up you know showing me a read only uh, data on the screen on the page what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to use a component called input field all right input field component allows us to input the data and it has an attribute where you reference the value of the field which field you want to input data into so you just make it account dot name in this case save it okay <clears throat> when you try to use input field component it will uh, you know give you this error it will say that you must use this this component within an apex form component let's talk about this right <clears throat> so anytime you want some uh, action from the uh, user of the page you have to include those components inside the form component all right anything which requires the end user action something like that the end user is entering the data or a button that an end user can click or a link that an end user can click for all these things they, they need to be within an apex form component right so all that you have to do is just create a form component and make sure that your input field is within the apex form component what i try to do is i try to put the form component right after the page component right so that anything anywhere in the page which has got to do with the form gets covered inside it right so you can have the apex page component and then you can start the apex form component and towards the end also you can do the same thing so anywhere you have an input field or a command button or a link they all get uh, you know within the form component so that's it now do you see this now it's being displayed as an input field which means you have an option of making changes here got it so same way if you let me put it inside a page block section uh, collapsible equals false column equals one we discussed why we will make column equals one right so that we just have one column for that page block section so the moment you put it inside a section it automatically takes the label of the field also here like that's the reason why i have put it into the page block section so if you put something inside a page block section it will automatically take the label of the field also So I want the type and the industry field and then the form and the facts field. <clears throat> so do you see it? So this is one format. If you just want to display the data, this is the other format where you can change the data, change the values, right? You want to change the phone number, let's say one, two, three, four. You want to change the fax number here, right? So this can be done here on this page. Got it? Clear? Okay. There is a small logic to this. There's one more small logic which I want you to understand here. That when you actually make some changes here. You know, on this, let's say I just changed the phone number here. Right? It was one triple zero, one triple zero, and I made it one two three four. Whatever changes I've made here. Now this is not actually being saved in the database as of now. This is all on the user interface, still on this page, right? The changes need to be made in the database also. So though input field is allowing me to make changes, but the changes are still lying on the UI. It's not getting into into the database right as of now. So how do we make changes into the database? We need some action for that. Okay. 
So for action, you can use another component which is called a command button. So there are two uh, components. One is a command button. The other one is a command link. And you can use either of them to perform an action. If it's command button, value can be uh, save it now and action can be save. Right. So value is what value displays on the button. So once you create the button, what do you want to display? What label you want to display on the button? Okay, that's what value is. So value you can write whatever you want. So while you're using an Apex command button, <coughs> you can uh, use this component and value will be whatever text you want to display on the button. That's one. Action is the actual action which you uh, would be performing, right? So this there is this default action called save because we are still using standard controller, right? So there is this default save action which will save or you know all the changes into the database. So I'm going to use this default save action, save the page. So now we have the input field where I can make the changes instead of LTD, I want to make it limited and I can then put perform the save operation. Correct. So it will save all the changes to the record. Save it now. See the record gets saved and the changes have been updated. Hey James, uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the command button component that you created, right? Mm -hmm. Is that uh, is that the only way we can show a button? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm just trying to understand. Uh, is that the only way we can show a button, or uh, you're saying that is that the only way so how do you, we can perform a save? So basically, with the command button, with the command button component, what are you doing? Command button component brings you a button, all right, and that button can have an action attribute, a save attribute, or maybe something else. You can perform any action, but uh, right now we just wanted to make the changes uh, in the, into the database, so we did the save. Got it. Got it. If I want to change the you know size size of the button and stuff, can I write attributes to it? Yeah, yeah. We can do you know everything. So we can you can have a button designed as per your requirement or you know the color and everything so we will you know talk about that a little later the styling okay. and everything can be controlled for whatever components you see here see salesforce by default has uh, you know uses all the default styling of salesforce like this button looks very similar to the buttons that are used in salesforce right so it all comes with default styling but in case we want we can do complete uh, styling from our side so if you see almost every component Uh, every component has an option of style, right? Okay. So that style is where we can define how what is going to be the look and feel of the button. So you know that is how it is. But we are not talking about you know the styling part right now. We are just dealing with the standard style. Later on, we will talk about you know how we can control the styling. Right. Sure, sure. And if I want to align it to the center or align it to exactly where that is. Yeah. So uh, for this button, basically, there is another you know component. See, everything we can do using uh, the CSS, so aligning to the center and everything. But uh, there is one more component in Salesforce which allows you to you know uh, align your buttons, and that's called a page block button. All right. So if you want to control uh, how where your button uh, appears. Let me show you before uh, you know we got get into page block button. If you look into a standard Salesforce record or a page, you would see that Salesforce buttons usually appear at the top and at the bottom. So there's a repeat of the same buttons. See this? Right? In case you want that sort of thing, you should use your button inside another component, which is called an FX page block button. 
create this component fx page block buttons and put your command button inside this all right the moment you do this it gets repeated and the align to center is automatically happened right so it's at the top and bottom in case you don't want to see it uh, at the top and bottom both you just want it at the top then in the page block buttons you have an option of location so location you can just make it top by default it brings it at the top and bottom uh, bottom both you can just say location equals top now it appears at top if you just want it at bottom you should say location equals bottom Yeah, so that's how it works. <clears throat> Clear on this? Now there's another uh, component as I told you, command link. Command link and command button are you know, functionality wise same, just that the look and feel is different. So command link looks more like a link. Not more like a link, it looks exactly like a link. So uh, for example, I create epix command link here with all the same features value equals favorite now action equals save see this is how a command link will look it will perform same operation there's no difference in the action, right? Just that a button, command button looks like a button and this looks like a link. So depending on your requirement, whether you want a link or a button, you will just choose it. Got it? And command link also uh, works with this uh, Apex uh, page block buttons component. Right? Okay. There's another small thing that I want you to understand here. Um, let me, you know, display some data here first. Okay, let's say this is my page, the visual force page. I make some changes and then I try to click on the save button. Once I click on the save button, the changes will be saved in the database and I will be redirected to the standard page of this record. Standard page of this record for which I have uh, you know, got the record ID here. Save it. Changes are saved you are redirected to the standard detail page of the record. Got it? So that's what a save action does. Save action, saves changes in database, redirects you to standard detail page of record. Okay? What if I just want to save the changes and not go anywhere else? I just want to stay on that same page. Fine. In that case, you will use another action. There's another action which is called quick save. So quick save will basically save the changes in the page, in the database. Make the changes in the database and stays on the same page same visual force page. So it will not move away from that visual force page, right? So depending on your requirement, again, we'll choose whether you want your users to, you know, move to the detail page or you want them to stay on the same visual force page after they click on the save button. <clears throat> so let's say I've removed the link part, commented the link part. I'll just create one more button with quick save action. Page, oh, sorry, command button. Value can be save and stay on this page. It's just whatever you want to uh, put here. And action can be quick save. So this is also a default action, quick save. So uh, if you try to you know, change something here now, 
one five double nine this is what i mean right if i say save and stay on this page it will make the changes on the database and stay on the same page it will not go away how you understand whether the changes have been saved in the database or not you can notice it here right now it is one five double zero right updated value is this so i will just say see changes have been saved uh, saved in the database that's the reason why this area got updated and i come back to the same page all right so depending on our requirement we will just choose whether we want to move out of this page and go to the detail page or we just want to stay on the same page right okay so uh, that's one more thing now there are other ways of editing the data we have used apex detail component right so this is one way you use input field component that's one thing uh, there are a few more ways uh, we'll look into those so we have used apex uh, detail component right yesterday we talked about apex detail component if i'm using an apex detail component and i want to use uh, right this is where i am able to you know do it field by field but if i'm using an apex detail component and still want the data to be editable on my page how do i do that so i don't want to create input fields field by field i want to use a detail component Try to line get the name of the account to be displayed as title. Um, okay, let me put the detail component here. Related list equals false and Title equals false. And let's get the ID from here. All right. So this is what a detail component does, right? It brings in all the details of the record. I just don't want to go field by field. What if I want to make, uh, you know, uh, be able to make changes uh, while I'm using the detail uh, component, multiple fields and all, right? And I don't want to actually click on the edit also. Then you have an option which is called an inline edit. For a detail component, there's an attribute which is called inline edit. And you just have, by default, it's false. You have to make it true. That's it. That's all that we need to do. See it again. Inline edit. Make um, by default it's false. We'll have to make it true. Okay. Now once the inline edit has been enabled for a detail component, you see you will have an option of editing the uh, record on the page directly. Let's say the annual revenue. You want to update? You can just take your mouse there double click and you will see that you are able to edit it add one more zero and save the changes Correct. so by default it comes number of employees so this inline edit will basically allow you to make your data editable on the page directly without moving into the edit page or something any field you want to update you just have to Hello. Yeah, sorry. I lost voice. Okay. 
so uh, this is where you know basically what you can do is you can actually uh, make the changes and then save those changes right so this inline edit support will do that got it questions around that what an inline edit is doing all right so that's second way of doing it now what if i want uh, you know five or six fields now if i go into the go back to the previous example uh, the problem with my previous example was there was a small challenge with that the problem is that the data it's is being displayed as an input field sometimes you don't want the data to be displayed as input field you want the data to be displayed as a read only field and uh, still you want people to be able to you know edit the data got it they should be able to double click and edit the data so if you are using a detail component then it's fine then uh, we saw that in the detail component there is an attribute called inline edit but if i don't want to use the detail component and still be able to use that kind of a functionality that uh, the data display is like a read only and uh, you know still editable uh, displays as a read only but uh, when i when someone double clicks on it it becomes editable for that all that you have to do is you just have to go and use another component which is called an output field uh, let me just do that example now Account it's page block data interface. If you want to display your data in the you know in the read only format then there is another component which is called output field we have done input field let's see output field output field will basically you know just show the data as an output or a read only format account dot name right mark id equals right so displays the name of the record as the output uh, value or a read only value and there's another component called inline edit support which can be included here inline edit support also requires a form component Got this. So though the data is being displayed as an output field value, it looks like a read only, but when you double click on this, it becomes editable, right? How did we do this? For doing this, you just have to make sure that you use one more component called inline edit support in that particular page block, right? So I created the page block and then I can create certain output fields here in this page block. Um, let me create a page block section also so that the labels populate automatically. Columns equals one, right? And what I can do is I can just copy this, put it here. So Okay. One more output field. Output field for let's say the type. Account dot type. We can have the same thing for phone, fax. 
Right. This is how it is. <clears throat> you have your uh, you know output fields created, and you can double click on it to edit this. All right. How is it happening? Just try to look into the structure. Inside the page block section, I have all my output field components. All right. And along with those output field components, I've used one more component, which is called Apex Inline Edit Support. So if you put Apex Inline Edit Support inside a parent component, here that is a page block section. So if you put it inside a parent component, it by default enables Inline Edit Support for all the other child components in the same uh, parent, under the same parent. Correct? So because I put this in Inline Edit Support inside the uh, Apex page block section so inline edit support gets enabled for all these components. Got it? Now you can make changes here. So we have different ways of doing the same thing. Depending on your requirement, you will just go and make the user interface. First one that we saw was basically just displaying the input fields right on the page. Second one, uh, you know that, that can be a good thing for an edit page if you have a different or a separate edit page using input field is an option if you are working with a detail component so on the detail component there is an attribute called inline edit which can be used and if you are uh, working with uh, you know if you just don't want to use the detail component and still you want to be able to uh, allow your users to uh, edit the data somewhere then this is the best thing that can be done for that Got it? Clear? Okay. So this is how it works. Now we will move into, uh, if we do not have any questions here, I will move into the next type of controller, uh, the standard list controller, which uh, allows us to display list of records. So we can actually do standard list controller to display list of records. So far we have been dealing with one single record at a time, right? So we always need to supply the ID here and then only the record for which I've supplied the ID value for that record actually come onto my page. Now the next thing that we will get into is displaying a list of records, not just one record. So if you have any and questions, uh, please let me know. Can you, uh, can you just give me a minute? I'll be right back. Just one minute. Sure. Uh, the difference between the standard controller and the list controller is standard controller page always requires okay your standard controller page always requires a record id and it's a page which can only display one record at a time on the page so display one record at a time or be you know primarily understand it that the standard controller page gets connected to one record in the database at one point of time right so it's a template uh, which gets connected to one record and uh, you know this is a, id needs to be supplied in the url always and uh, the you know it will fetch the values of that record in that uh, page right so that's about the standard controller now the second thing is the standard list controller standard list controller uh, basically works with list of records okay so you don't have to actually deal with uh, the id in the url and you don't have to supply the record id in the url as such all right all that you have to do is you just have to go ahead and create a page for the standard list controller and define which object list you want to display and it will do the job for you for example uh, let's let's say accounts so in my accounts i have all these accounts available right all these accounts are available now i want to create a page which displays a list of all these accounts right then i'll use a standard list controller okay so for a uh, standard list controller uh, you will uh, we'll talk about the list controller and we will also talk about the um uh, we'll also talk about one more component which is called an apex 
page block table so we'll learn because to display list i need to create a table of records right a list cannot be displayed the way we were displaying a single record it requires a table to be created for that right so that's what we are going to do now the next is the standard list controller page that we're going to create so how do we do that let's go ahead and start creating a page say apex uh, slash v11 Okay. Go, go with, go with 17, right? okay. Um, it would be good if you try, you know, try to take some other sequence, maybe you know, maybe VF12, so that uh, we have all the pages uh, of the session in one sequence. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. The 17 does not have anything, so I'll use this one. Uh, all right so standard list controller page uh, that will display a list is very simple all that you have to do is you just have to you know use call the standard controller as we were doing earlier and along with that you have one more attribute on the apex page component which is called the record set where you have to call this record set where and you have to it's, it stands for record set variable okay so you have to define a variable for the set of records from this object standard controller object that's it and you can call it anything you can it's a variable so you can name it whatever you want so it's a variable which holds the values of all the records from this object that's how it is right and then we can just say fx page block title let me call it list of accounts and then we would say apex page block table as I, as I told you we will need to create a table here since we are talking about displaying multiple records so for apex page block table component uh, let's understand a few things about apex page block table page block table component has two required attributes one is value one is var variable all right so value is basically um, you know the kind of uh, list that you want to display in that particular page value is basically the list of records that need to be displayed where is one more vari variable defined for the value so nickname used for the value all right so what I'm trying to do here is in this apex page block table what I would do is I would use a value which is this basically in this table I want to display these records right so my value will be like this displayed like this should be equal to records at var and there is one more attribute here which is called var which you can call it a or b or whatever you can give a nickname here and then you have to just go ahead and define the columns in the table so in the table what will we have we will have columns so let's say my column value is a dot name okay so this variable stands for this one so it's this variable is kind of an uh, alias for this big value that you have given here all right and inside the column when you're trying to you know fetch a value from uh, the object you just have to say a dot name basically variable name dot field name then this so it can be like name type industry and the phone number and the fax number See, the page is created. Now I don't need to supply the ID here in the URL. Got it? So what we are doing, we just created our Visual Force page. We defined the standard controller equals account. 
uh, we used one more attribute of the page component which is called record set pair and uh, i gave it some names so you can call it whatever you want then in the page block where value was required i call this record set where record set variable that was defined i defined one more variable which will be called within the page block itself and then i've created five columns one two three four five and each column i've defined what value i want to put in this column so each column component is creating the column here like account name type industry phone fax correct Jit, uh, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more about the record, record set where attribute? Just give me one minute, huh? One, one minute. Hello. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the record set where attribute and why we're using it? Okay. So, record set where attribute is basically. Okay. Yeah. So, this is just a variable that we are defining. All right. So it basically stands for record set variable, all right? So this is a variable which holds the value of all the record set of records, right? From this object, from the account object. Because if I have to reference that anywhere, if I have to call it that, okay, I want to display all the accounts, I have to give that certain name. You know? List of accounts should get some name, right? So I'm actually giving it a name here. Got that logic? Right, right. So that's what we have done here. I just given it a name, okay? So that on the table I can call it and I can connect it with that. So since I called the object here, I also you know uh, defined a variable which holds all the records of that object. And on the table I am just able to call that thing. Got it? So on the table you are calling that object, that uh, variable, and then again. Naming that, giving that variable another variable name here, right? Right. So I am calling this, uh, uh, you know, uh, variable, fine, the record set where, but I am giving another variable name for this big expression. So this is my expression, right? Is that, is that, is that necessary? Yes. So where, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's necessary. What, what if I don't give a variable there? It will not allow you to do that. So that's a mandatory okay. attribute and it, that needs to be given. Now, if you are thinking from the point of view that uh, why is that necessary? The point you would not be able to call the, I mean, when you are defining the column, then you would not be able to call those. You will not be able to call and this is something which were, uh, you know, uh, which is a required attribute of the page block component, right? So your this this statement always might not be you know this short. It sometimes it can be account dot contacts uh, dot something. So this where attribute is a required one. Okay. Required. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. And this is something which you will then call here. So instead of you know calling that entire big statement inside the column, we can just call the small back inside it. Got it. So this is how the connection is. So I. I defined my standard controller, I defined a set of accounts around that and then I just uh, went ahead and created uh, my, you know, page block table in that I have called the value and the var attribute and then I'm calling it within the columns, all right? Okay, so time for a small activity. Uh, we will just do this thing. I want you to create a page. 
to display a list of all contacts and the fields that I want to see are first name, last name, email, phone, fax, account name and uh, account industry or you know a website. All right, so these are the fields I want to see. I want you to create a page that can display a list of all, all contacts and it should show first name, last name, email, phone, fax, account name and website. Can we quickly do this? Do you want to see the code uh, on my page or you want to see the requirement or both? Okay, let me try to accommodate both the things. Here's the requirement and here's the code. Yep. So requirement code, both the things you can see. Let's quickly create this page for contacts. So let me create one more page uh, for uh, opportunities. So I'll just create the uh, page which uh, you know which can display a list of opportunities for me. So let me just go here. Timeless controller opportunity. And then what should be the next thing that we put here? One more attribute. What is missing? What one more attribute is missing here? Record sentence. Right. Give it any name, whatever you want. And then just go ahead and create your components, page block and page block table. Um, okay, let me put title as list of opportunities. And then I say X. Page block table and here put a value which can be same thing variable sorry variable can be o and you write it like apex column whatever fields you want to bring let's say o dot name Amount, stage name, close date, and uh, one more at the expected revenue.
standard controller equals opportunity oh find o dot uh, standard controller opportunity ops o where is the problem here opportunity expected revenue spelling is incorrect expected all right spelling needs to be corrected that's it so now my list of opportunities is ready right now there is a problem with the standard uh, list controller the problem is that it can display 20 records at a time all right so right now it is displaying 20 records on the page and other records are not being displayed all right so for standard list controller you have a few more actions which are uh, used for pagination you have next you have uh, previous uh, you have first and you have last so these four actions can be used for pagination you know basically navigating from the first page to the second page that was right so you can just go ahead and uh, create a page blog uh, command button page blog button and in that page blog button you can put the page uh, command buttons it's a command button with a value uh, say next and the action can be um, next correct so action name itself is next it requires a form component here fx fx form component here and uh, end it with an fx form component that's it that's it now it shows me a next button next button will take me to the next pages means the set of next 20 records click on this you see it shows me other set of records how do i go to the previous page so create a previous button to go to the previous page Previ previous all right call it previous page call it next page right so the next page uh, next action will take me to the next page previous page action will take me to the previous page right here i just have two pages so i'm uh, able to manage things with the next and previous uh, if you have multiple pages then there are two more actions as i told you first and last you can use them so first will take you to the first page last will take you to the last page of the list got it so that's you know something which can be easily done using our uh, you know standard controller uh, logics or you know the actions okay please quickly have a look onto these two actions and let me know if you find any difficulty understanding any of these hey jeet uh, quick question hmm, tell me hello yeah, tell me Rohit, please tell me uh, the question can you hear me yeah i, I can hear you now so yeah, uh, so let's say i want to display you know um, display any any field in um, in some other object which are you know let's say it's not a parent child relationship i just want to display some field from some other object is that possible I, I can't hear you, man.
Hello. Yeah. Yes, Ruth. So uh, I think your question was around. Uh, yeah, in the, in the same in the same list, right? If I wanna if I wanna show some another Something which is another not related, another object which are not related. Okay. How will you? Okay. How will you create the connection? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what will be the relationship? If there is no relationship, then what is the connect? What you know, what value it will show, right? That's something which is very important. If I'm displaying a table, and in that table I say I would just want to display anything uh, corresponding to a, a, an opportunity name that it has to have some connection, some relationship, right? You got my point? What I'm trying to say? That, that makes sense. And if we are talking about, are we able to display only the related object fields on the page? Uh, and can we just have, you know, one independent record on this page being displayed? The answer to that is yes, because we are still using standard controller and standard controller cannot bring in independent uh, data on the page, right? Independent data means something which is not related, but, uh, you know, I can put my own logics to display that data. But uh, once we get into the custom controller, we'll be able to do that. Some points we will have that kind of requirement, not maybe on uh, this corresponding uh, list or something like that. But uh, we might have some some of our logics. Uh, we can do that in custom controllers sometimes. But still, uh, you know, at the back end, we will have to you know put some logic or you know associate some uh, associate the records with some logic so that they can appear corresponding to each other. Right, but for standard controller, no, no, not. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So uh, you know that's what uh, we will you know uh, cover today. So let's keep it uh, here for today. And uh, tomorrow we can meet around same time. I think uh, the 10 uh, p.m. that works for you, right? For it for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, 10 p.m. works, bro. Yeah.